on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. The Sox are on a roll this spring, winning four of the last five games, hitting well over 300 while scoring 45 runs, all behind new skipper Robin Ventura. Today, the Sox take on Barry Zito and the San Francisco Giants. Coming up next. We are coming to you from Camelback Ranch, Glendale, where this afternoon, Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. As Robin Ventura, Paul Canerco, Adam Dunn, and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Bruce Bochy's San Francisco Giants. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ken Harrelson along with Steve Stone as we get set to bring you the second of five games coming your way from spring training right here over Comcast Sportsnet. And, Stoney, in our last telecast, we talked about the storyline being offense. Right now, the storyline is who the devil's going to close for this club. Well, that's the mystery. That's the one question that's left. And, obviously, Matt Thornton is a guy with the inside position. Jesse Crane has taken himself out with an oblique problem, but Matt Thornton last year emerged with the job. He couldn't hold it, and Sergio Santos took over. They've got Addison Reed, a youngster with a great arm. He's in the mix. The dark horse, Hector Santiago, the young left-hander with a screwball, is a guy with a chance. And Nate Jones has emerged as a candidate, a guy with a great arm. We saw last telecast through the ball very well. So, Hawk, we don't know the answer, but we do know one thing. They're going to pick one soon. <laughs> All right. This afternoon, it'll be Philip Humber against Barry Zito. So sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. Welcome back to the ballpark at Camelback Ranch Glendale for the White Sox and the San Francisco Giants. The Giants having a pretty good spring, although you wouldn't recognize the ball club they brought today. It's not going to resemble the one that they start their championship season with. The Giants, a lot of people pick to supplant the Arizona Diamondbacks as number one in the National League West. They're a whole lot better, especially with Buster Posey back in their lineup, most likely in the four spot. They've got terrific pitching. There's no doubt about that. They had that last year, but last year they scored the fewest runs in the National League, and that really did them in. They had a plethora of injuries that wound up eventually the second half of the year just destroying the baseball team, and Arizona went on and actually ran away with it. But Bruce Bochy thinks he's got a pretty good ball club, got some problems at second base, Sanchez, their normal second baseman, Freddy Sanchez, had arm surgery and he still can't throw the ball, so they're going to have to make a decision there. They've got a couple of free agents on the ball club that they acquired over the winter time that they figure are really going to help them. We're going to see Melky Cabrera today, and I don't have to tell you how good he was for the Kansas City Royals, especially against the Sox. They've also got Angel Pagan, Ryan Terrio, and Clay Hensley that are joining this team. And so... 
it's a ball club that looks like uh, they've got enough talent to win, especially with that pitching staff they're going to put out there. So it's not overcast today. It's just not sunny. It's uh, certainly one of the prettier days we've had. A lot of the fans are going to appreciate that that sun is not going to bake down on them. But it's cool enough. It's about 78 degrees. Just another gorgeous day here in Arizona. The players have gotten in a whole lot of work. And they've avoided major injury. The Sox did make 14 roster moves. And so they're down to 37 players remaining in their major league camp. 16 pitchers, 4 catchers, 11 infielders, and 6 outfielders. Let's take a look at our BMO Harris starting lineup for the San Francisco Giants. It's going to be Gregor Blanco, a free agent who's playing great, along with Nate Scherholz, Melky Cabrera hitting third, Brett Pill in the cleanup spot, Joaquin Arias playing second, Brandon Crawford at short, Connor Gillespie with Chris Stewart, and Eli Whiteside is the DH today. We'll take a look at how the Sox are going to line up behind Philip Umber. It's going to be Viciedo, Diazza, and Rios in the outfield. Lillibridge gets the nod at third with Escobar, Beckham, and Balkanerko at first. A.J. Pierzynski behind the plate, and Philip Umber on the hill. Hasn't been a particularly great spring for Phillip, but he looks to have secured the number five spot as the starting rotation is pretty much intact. But that's not the real controversy if there is any in camp. It's exactly what they're going to do with the bullpen and the three spots that were available out there. Looks like Hector Santiago has nailed down one of them, and so that'll leave just two. So Umber, who did have to work on the off day on Tuesday, just getting his work in in preparation for his start today, going out there with an ERA up over five. Last year was kind of a tale of two halves for Philip Umber. He started out throwing the ball exceptionally well. Second half of the year because the innings had piled up and he threw more innings, got more starts and more work than he ever had at any time during his career, kind of tailed off at the end. But if we can see the first half Umber, we're going to be in pretty good shape because for a while he was not only the best pitcher on the staff, he was one of the best pitchers in the league. So with Barry Larson behind the plate as the umpire, we're getting ready to play baseball. They're throwing the ball around, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us for the second of five games coming your way from spring training. Gregor Blanco gets set to lead it off, and in your summary right there, Philip Umber right on the money. He just got worn down. I think that's, uh, you know, when you're not used to going that deep into a year with that many innings, your arm just, in your body, just can't take the, the strain. So here's Blanco, 28 year old outfielder, 258 major league hitter. He's been with Atlanta and Kansas City, so one pitch, one out. Plus, he got beat up physically as well. Well, those line drives right <laughs> back took, through the middle. He took a few of those. And we'll take a look at the umpires today. We told you about Barry Larson behind the plate. Adrian Johnson is at first. He's a good one. Lance Barrett at second, and Jordan Baker is at third. Shire Holtz takes first pitch strike. Shire Holtz also 28 years old. Last year with the Giants hit 278, nine homers, and 41 knocked in. And the count, nothing in two. And here at beautiful Camelback Ranch, Glendale, 345 down the lines, 380 in the gaps, and 410 straightaway center. Checks it up. And after having a few cool days, which was unusual this time of year. It has turned out to be magnificent once again. Last year, as we talked about, that's the best weather I've ever seen in spring training. Every day he gone was picture perfect. Good breaking ball low and in to the left hand hitting Sherholtz and swung over the top of it. So one of the real good things about Philip Umber, who was a former number one draft pick. Is that he's always around the plate. If you're always around the plate, the hitters have to be more aggressive, and if they're more aggressive, they're going to swing at pitches out of the zone, and that's what happened. And the umpire sort of like that as well. They love that. So here 
Boy, Steve and I both are glad to see this guy <laughs> in a giant uniform. You're not kidding. In the other league? <laughs> oh. And we won't play him in interleague play. Wow. Melky Cabrera just wore our behinds out. Checks it up. Last year, 305 hitter with Kansas City, 18 homers and 87 knocked in. Hitting 400 on the spring with three homers and nine RBIs. Dayton Moore, the GM of Kansas City, made a pretty good trade. He got the talented left hander Jonathan Sanchez for Melky Cabrera. Yeah, with the situation in the outfield with Kansas City, it was really good. Boy, when they had those guys out there last season, one of the best outfields in baseball. They did, just didn't have any starting pitching. Now, when they realize that they're still a while away from winning, Melky in the option year of his contract, so they got a good young left-hander who, if he can get the ball over the plate, which remains to be seen, can be one of the better pitchers around. Yeah, when they had Alex Gordon and Melky and Vancouver out there no, in that that outfield, not too many balls hit the ground. And not only that, if they got to the ball, they usually threw you out if you took any liberties on the base pass. Well, all three of them could stop a man from going from first to third. Yeah. So that helped the pitching staff out to a degree. Here's Brett Pill, 27 year old. Last year at Fresno, hit 312, 25 homers, and knocked in 170. I hadn't checked at 107. A lot of people that think he's going to make this ball club. Well, he's got a pretty good resume. Giants come in at 13 and 9 on the spring. Sacks it up. And the count two and one. The other two first base candidates are first basemen who are going to play. Belt and Huff are left handed. Well, they think he's going to be the guy to come off the bench in that right handed pinch hitting role and spot starting. Belk last year had a terrific spring, especially against us. Yeah, he can he can swing the bat. Bill, 6'4, 225 pounds out of Covina, California. There goes the runner. And a nice pick right there. Bad throw. No bueno. We've seen Escobar do that a couple of times in the last couple of games that we've broadcast. He's got to fill out at first base fairly easily. And then just air mails call it. This ball's hit hard. This is a tough pick to begin with. That looked to be the hard part. Yeah, it did. But the easy part wasn't so easy. So here's Arias. Arias at Omaha last year hit 232, a couple of homers, and dropped in 25. First pitch strike. Yeah, the funny contrasting thing about those two errors that we've seen Escobar make is the first one he waited just too long, too nonchalant, and that one he was just too quick because he had plenty of time. And it's going to pay off in a run for the Giants. This is a wild pitch. Charge to Philip Umber. That sweeping breaking ball away from AJ couldn't be handled. And so the walk with two outs and nobody on comes home to pay dividends for the Giants.
Two balls and a strike here in the top of the first one nothing Giants if you're just joining us. They're leaving the count at two. Joaquin Arias out of Santa Domingo. Started off with Texas, went through the Mets, Kansas City, and now San Francisco. Nice play by Lillibridge. Yes. That's bueno right there. Good. But they come up with an unearned run, and after happening a play, it's 1 0 Giants. We're back at the ballpark, so let's take a look at our BMO Harris starting lineup for the Sox. Alejandro Diaz leading it off, having a pretty decent spring. Brent Lillibridge, a great spring. Adam Dunn hitting a lot of home runs with Paul Canerco hitting fourth. A.J. Pierzynski, Alex Rios, Diane Vicieto, Gordon Beckham, and Eduardo Escobar rounded out. The defense, and now the lineup behind Barry Zito. Cabrera Blanco and Shearholtz left to right with Gillespie, Crawford, Arias, and Pill. Stewart, the former White Sox catcher behind the plate. And Barry Zito, the highly paid left-hander on the hill. 2-0 this spring. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours. Here's Diaz, the corner's in close. Takes ball one, Zito. Lifetime record of 145 up, 124 down. But in the National League, since signing that mega contract, he is 43 and 61. Well, that fastball that used to be at least a factor in the mid 80s is now down to the low 80s, high 70s. Heading toward his number of 75. Two and one to count to Diazza. But they got him not only this year, but next year with a $7 million buyout on the option for the next year. I guess the best thing to could remark on that would be good for him. He got a terrific contract, and there's still close to $50 million left on it. There's a strike. So a full count. Diazza. Hitting at 275, no homers, three ribbies on the spring. Last year did a heck of a job. 329, four homers, and 23 in that short time as he strikes him out. Sox have won four out of the last five to improve their mark to 9 and 12 on the spring. It shows you with a high fastball, you don't have to throw it very hard if you put it in the proper spot. And that's up and out of the zone to the left hand hitter. Here's Lillibridge, who made that beautiful play to save 
a run, at least one. Bend hitting at 325 on the spring, no homers, and five knocked in. Our all purpose player. Count evens. I don't mind the, the adjective utility guy in certain cases, but with him, I don't like it at all. I like the idea that he is the all purpose player for the White Sox. Well, hitting 13 home runs last year and showing that he could give you not only an adequate but a positive defensive effort at any place that Ozzie decided to put him really established him as a, a quality major league player last year. That's right. That's the reason he's an all purpose player. Terrific effort here to his left. This ball looked like it was going to find a hole. He got up quickly enough. Got it over there just in time to get Philip Umber out of the inning. And only give up the one unearned run. There's a shot on a rolling breaking ball. So the double. Got a mistake from Zito and did not miss it. That's the biggest difference in the Barry Zito these days than the guy that was dominating baseball in Oakland is that that curveball that used to be so devastating now rolls more than it breaks. And when you lose the kind of velocity, that's what happens. One year, 02, 23 and 5. Poof. And nobody hit the curveball. No. It was a nose to toes curveball that broke. So sharply that you just had no chance. 23 and 5. Here's Adam. Done hitting it. 308 on the spring, four homers and 12 driven in. There's another rolling curve ball. Right handed hitter may have hit that one out of the ballpark. Left handed hitters have a tendency to take it. Adam wants to get to a spot where Zito in spring training with first base open pitches to him with a fastball. Oh. Nice block right there. It wasn't, by Arias. It wasn't a particularly good move by Zito. No. Zito certainly does not want to pitch to Canerco. That's that inside move that nobody was covering second. Zito decided to try some trickery on the mound, but he's the only one that knew he was going to do it. Arias hanging out around second. As there's another rolling curveball, misses. And the count two and up. Stewart wants it away, and as you see, it hooked around the plate. Three balls, no strikes to the big man. Now here, I'm pretty sure you would give him the 3-0 green light. Indubitably. Yeah. You're probably going to get a fastball. I would assume you're going to get a fastball. With Canerco on deck, is a good chance he yeah. will. There it was, but it's up high. So oh, with two on one out, let's check out our picks to click. Jim Angio, our director of the crew of Leverage. Steve has taken the lead. It's a big lead, too. It's almost insurmountable. <laughs> In our first game. <laughs> oh, boy. Roy Revis and all the guys back home. And I, we're going to go with A.J. Pierzynski. You jumped on the A.J. bandwagon. I told you I was going to take him last week, True. but you got him before me. Polly hitting at 275 with no homers and three driven in. Oh, 
an unearned run for the Giants in the top half of this frame if you're just joining us. Now feel fairly deep. Straight up and that fastball is high. Now Chris Stewart former Sox. Organization player. Chris, a good catcher. Out to talk to Zito. Well Adam's not going to get too adventuresome but one of the. Real good things catchers can do in this situation. They prefer to do it with a left hand hitter up. But if you can work it out in this case with Brett Pill. To go behind the runner at first base you can get a lot of pickoffs that way and there's some catchers that do it better than others and Stewart's got such a strong arm he might be able to do that. That's in the whole base hit. Here comes Brent. He's going to make the turn. Ball, the throw is bobbled by Cabrera. And they get done on a bad, bad mistake right there at second base. They had nowhere to go. And they get him. Meanwhile, the game is tied at one. Well, he's going to drive in his fourth run of the year. Even if Cabrera fields this ball cleanly, he's not going to be able to get the job done. And Adam Dunn strays too far off the bag, gets thrown out. AJ hitting at 250 on the spring with three homers and seven knocked in. One of those three home runs. And inside to Parker, that if you were with us, in our last telecast you saw. Lays off of it. For the 2-0 count. Yeah. yeah that's just a brain cramp right there. When you... Especially with. Melky Cabrera in left field. He didn't even throw that ball particularly well but he's got one of the better arms around. Flips that curveball up there and the count evens at two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Close. Good out. Yeah, when you make a base running gaff like that, nobody in the ballpark feels any worse than you do. That's a long run in from second oh. base. And there is ball four. So the second walk, and that'll bring up Alex Rios. 23 pitches already for Barry Zeno. Now, Philip Umber is on a pitch count today. It's going to be either six innings or right around 80 pitches. We're not sure exactly where the count will fall for Zito. Get a good pitching coach in Dave Rigetti, however. I would think that Zito, the way he's, it just, Point just juncture of his career is going to have to come up with a very good change. As there is a line drive base hit, so Paulie's going to be held at third. That'll load him up. Well, that was the change up, except it wasn't the very good change up. That was the one right up in the eyes of Rios. And I think you're right, Hawk, because if you're just fastball and curveball and you have some curveball problems, which he's had today. Then you're really vulnerable. He threw a straight change here, but he left it right up in Rios's eyes, and now a trip to the mound. I would think that the best thing, that one of the best things they could do, of course, Dave forget as you mentioned, a very fine pitching coach in his own right, a terrific pitcher. It might behoove them to get a, some video of Jamie Moyer. That that change up is is a special one. Yeah, I mean he's got a really good one.
Well, they got some video of Jenny Moyer back in the Hoover administration. So <laughs> thinks there's enough around. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of video of Jamie Moyer. Jamie, 49 years young, and having a great spring for the Colorado Rockies. And here's the tank. Sacks packed, and he takes it right there. That's the pitch he's going to have to learn how to lay off of as he did on that one. Fastball up. Tank has a, a record. He has a track record as being a slow starter. First year, Birmingham started off very slow for the first month and a half, two months, and came on like gangbusters. Same things. First year at Charlotte and the second year at Charlotte. Started off very slow and then came on very strong. This has not been a particularly good spring at all, and hopefully, no. this is not a portent of things to come. Big pitch right here, the 2 1. Good pitch for Tank to hit, and he fouls it back. Canerco, Pierzynski, and Rios, the runners from third to first. Could not lay off that high fastball, and it'll retire the side. Sox do tie it up 1 1 after 1. Tickets for White Sox home games at U.S. Cellular Field are on sale right now. Tickets start at just $7 a seat, and the 2012 schedule is full of great matchups, promotional nights, and games featuring post-game fireworks. So purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. One one tie. As Brandon Crawford will lead it off. And in the shortstop. Hitting 333 on the spring with a homer and nine RBIs. Crawford, pretty big shortstop. 6'2, 215. He will be the number one starter this year. Well, the players that were. Gone from last year, 2011, Carlos Beltran, Pat Burrell, Orlando Cabrera, Mark DeRosa, Darren Ford, Jeff Keppinger, Waldis, Joaquin, Ramon Ramirez, Cody Ross, 
Jonathan Sanchez and Andre Torres. The players they have acquired new are, as you mentioned earlier, Cabrera, Clay Hensley, Angel Pagan, and Ryan Theriot. Well, they believe that it was largely due to injuries. Now, Pablo Sandoval was going to play third base for him every day. Has lost about 25, 30 pounds, so he looks a whole lot better. And when he's right, he swings the bat well. Solid smash to center. So the count jumps up and bites Umber right there. First half of the year last year when Phil Umber was right his calling card was always strike one. He got ahead of just about all the hitters. And then could nibble at the corners and make hitters. Swing at his pitch. But if he falls behind then it's going to be a problem. Here's Gillespie. Connor Gillespie. Should be. Take your time, boys. Crack them up. You've had good springs, Hawk. I know you've had bad springs. And if you're a veteran player, it probably doesn't matter as much. But for Vicieto, who's had a bad spring this year, does that affect him going into the season at all? I don't think so, only because of the past his, his track record. I, I know that I told was Robin about it, and it has not affected Robin one bit. Robin said he's going to be out there opening day, and he's going to be there and get his advance. He's got a chance to be a monster, as we all know. Yeah. But you know, you know, I'm just giving you what his track record has been. I have not talked with Diane about it. Uh, He's the only one to know how it's going to affect him. Well, he's had another position change. He's moved over to left field. That's the thing that I think has probably affected him more than anything. Is he said he just does not feel comfortable there. And there's a huge difference. I mean, there's a huge difference in playing third base and there is a first base. There's a huge difference in playing left field as there is in right field. You get used to those angles. It's probably giving chase. Can't get there. And all of a sudden now instead of the ball coming to you. One way is coming to you another way. And he just has not been able to get. I wish they would back him up some more a couple of more steps. Play to where he knows that the only thing he's going to have to do is either. Go to his right his left or come in. Well most likely that's going to happen to him depending on how he adjusts. You can see the. Sunglasses today on the top of the hats. There's no sun. But it looks good. Looks very good. He gone. And that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom of the second, the one one tie.
Tuesday, the push to the playoffs continues when Patrick Kane and the Hawks hit the road for a battle with the Devils in New Jersey. Coverage begins at 5.30 with Chicago Tribune Live. Blackhawks with Devils, Tuesday night at 6, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans best friend. A run on a hit, no errors for them. A run on three hits and one big error. The unearned run for the Giants in the first. Barry Zito got very lucky in that first inning. Could have easily given up three or four. But for a base running mistake. But when you walk a couple of guys, give up three hits and get out with only one run, consider yourself fortunate. Takes that up high. Gordon continues to throw that leather as we saw the other night. Watch this play. This ball is absolutely scalded. Hit by Justin Upton, and it was a rocket that looked like it would ticket it for center field. Except for Gordon got in the way. Two balls and a strike. Gordon hitting at 233, a homer four RBIs on the spring. Alfield swung around to the right. Big gap out there in left center. And that's a fair ball right down the line. He just hammered it. If you're going to go, you better get on it. Here's the throw off the line marked by Cabrera. So the leadoff double. Gordon Baker, the umpire on the call, is Gordon Beckham rifles this one down the line. No chance at all for Gillespie, who was playing off the line. So here's Escobar. He's got a job to do. Gillespie and on the grass at third. Red pill. Even with the bag off the line at first. Actually got a good pitch to bunt. And fouls it back. High slow curveballs are nice to bunt. They are that. Even nicer to hit. That'll get the job done. That a boy, he got a rolling curveball. Zito's made a lot of mistakes with that breaking ball already. Escobar came in hitting 448 on the spring. You talked earlier about one of the guys going from last year's team, Pat Burrell. I saw him, he's now scouting. For the San Francisco Giants. Learning the craft. They've got him sitting next to some advanced scouts, major league scouts in the stands, so he knows what to look for. Tough to leave the field, and all of a sudden, they're going to ask you to scout. Diazza. There's a bunt. The only play is going to be on Diazza as Beckham will score, and the Sox take a 2 1 lead with Escobar moving into second. I think it was a sacrifice. I love that play at first and third. You score the run, you move a man into scoring position, you get yourself a run batted in. That's number four for Diazza. And he executed perfectly. A lot of people in the last couple of years have been talking about they love that play. You and I have seen it for a long time. Long time. It's not anything new. <laughs> I don't invent too much offensively new in the game. No.
Lillibridge, he ripped a double down the left field line and scored last inning. Gene Mock, I used to use that play almost. According to who the hitter was, of course, but almost every time he didn't have one of his real middle of the line of hitters. Off the end of the bat. So two down to Adam Dunn, who walked last inning. He saw absolutely nothing to hit. Most surprising with Paul Konerko up behind him, but Zito didn't get the ball down. Adam did not expand his strike zone, took a base, and Paul happened to knock in the first Sox run. Good eye. One and oh to die. Two and nothing. Ball upstairs a little bit just underneath it. it. Might have been the only pitch that Dunn has seen to hit today. However, it was a little higher than he would have liked. It was one of the better curveballs he's thrown, even though it was up just a hair, it still had some bite on it. Two out, two and two the count. Got him. But the double by Beckham. He scores. Sox lead it 2 1. Sox lead it two to one here in the top of the third inning. And joining us right now, I hope we have the same kind of 
inning with him was we had last time a five pitcher. Our new skipper, Robbie Ventura. Robin. Hello, guys. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. How's it going so far for you? Uh, today or all, overall? Overall. <laughs> overall. Uh, it's been fun. I mean, these these guys are coming out. They're working hard. Uh, you know, it's been great. I, I you know, have everything they've everything we've asked for, they've done. Robin, the starters going to be okay. Yeah. Steve was talking about in the opening about the closer in the bullpen. <laughs> Everybody's talking about that right now. Uh, you know, it, it's just one of those that I think we have guys that are qualified to do it. Uh, still up in the air for me. I mean, you know, you, you go through lines, you look at teams, and, you know, you look at opposing teams and, and what they have, and we, we have guys that can do it. So I, I don't think there's right now we we're set on one guy. Well, with the quality of some arms that you've got down there, this is one of those things that is a rule, as a rule. Not every time, but these guys make the decision for you. Yeah, and that's one thing about spring training that's happened this year, um, you know, my first year. But, you know, it, th things just kind of happen. Guys eliminate themselves. Guys put themselves into play a little bit more by, by the way they pitch and the way they do things, the way they talk, uh, you know, their attitude coming in every day. So, um, you know, it, it's been fun to watch that, of, of how these guys have progressed over spring. Well, you got some arms, as we talked, just mentioned. This guy, Nate Jones, has just jumped up into the mix a little bit. He has. He's pitched well lately. Um, you know, early on, he, I, I think that's part of it, uh, of the spring training. Guys come out, and every time they come out, they they feel like they have to show what they got. And, and you know, it's, it, they feel like it's do or die on that one day. So, it, you know, it's nice that you see these guys over a course of a month to be able to prove whether they're in or, or they're out. Robin, you haven't had... Uh... You haven't had major injuries to this point. I mean, you've had Jesse Crane who just threw and coming back from an oblique. But outside of that, you've been remarkably healthy. So how does that figure into your decisions? Because it looks like you've got a couple of healthy guys, maybe Escobar and Johnson for one spot. I mean, when do you start making those decisions and say, okay, this is going to be it? Well, you know, it, it's still there's still a process with it of, of how we're playing guys. We're starting to move guys around, uh, to, you know, to different spots. I mean, even with Lily playing third today, um, you know, just seeing how that plays out, having him at third and, and Escobar at short, um, you know, with Johnson in there, he's had good at bats all spring to get him to see if he's going to be able to play first, third, or, or whatever. So, you know, there there is a process of going on of, of how we're going to have to do it with Paulie being at first, if you're going to have to pinch run for him late in the game, what kind of moves you're going to be able to make. And you want to have the guys that you put in the game that we're, we're still going to be good defensively. Well, another spot that people are really asking about right now is one that you and I talked about earlier in the spring is a guy that has got a track record of being a slow starter, and he's going to make the catch right now. Diane Vissiato. We were talking about it a couple of innings ago, or an inning ago, I should say. And I think that maybe the move to left field, you know, he's just not comfortable with it yet. Yeah, not yet. I mean, but that's that's part of being on a team and, and doing what we're asking you to do. And, you know, he's he's frustrated more at, at the plate. And I think that kind of carries over. You know, he wants to show right. he belongs. And, you know, I talked to him today. And I said, you're going to be fine. It's just, you know, have patience with it. It's going to come. You know, you, can, you can't hit the five run homers to, just to prove everybody that you can hit. We know you can hit. Just relax and, and keep playing the game and, and make sure your attitude's right when you're going out there and, and playing. And, you know, I'm, I'm still behind them. Well, it, it, as we mentioned, he every year he's been here in White Sox uniform, he's been a slow starter. And people say, well, you got to get him to lay off the high fastball. And that's true. But on the other side of that page, you can't ask young Latin hitters to go up there and go deep into counts. Yeah, and, and he has to be comfortable going to the plate and be aggressive and do all the things that he's done in the past. It says now you're you're facing a little bit better pitching than you have in the past, and you know that that's where you need to be a little more selective and and hit the one that the the one pitch that you're going to get. Make sure you hit it. Robin, anything surprise you so far in this your first year as a manager? No, I, you know, again, you, you start going over all the scheduling and things like that. It's there, there's a lot more to it. The, the baseball part, like this, is fun. All, you know, all the other stuff is uh, it's time consuming. <laughs> Another one, two, three inning for you. We got to get you <laughs> late during the season. All right, Robin Ventura, thanks for the time. <laughs>
Batting by upgrading to a pregame party patio area out there, and that's the Bertucci boys. A diamond suite or one of our other great party areas. So call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com to book your group outing today. Yes, we just we might have found our closure, Steve. Every time we have Robin on the air, it's a one, two, three inning, and nothing happens. And it just goes by real quickly, and that's very nice. Polly smokes it for a base hit in the left field. So Polly now two for two with an RBI. Two six and one for us, one one and zero oh for them. And here's AJ. He walked his first trip. Ball misses. AJ, as I mentioned earlier, came in hitting at 250. He still is with that base on balls. Three homers, one of them inside to Parker. And we'll show that to you in a moment. That was the third of three hits. Came after a couple of ringing doubles. Good check right there. Now feel for the most part straight up and spread out. That ball hit well into left field. Cabrera back, back stretch, stretch. He looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes, yes. His fourth homer, and the Sox lead it four to one. AJ is now driven in nine this spring. And you don't see him go opposite field too often. Gives you an idea how lively the ballpark is. Barry Zito tries to throw a fastball out away. AJ goes right with it. And it's it out. Roy Revis has picked a click. Alex singled his first trip. Curveball strike. That ball hit hard down into the corner. And that's out of here. Just a line shot by Rios. Back to back homers by Pierzynski and Alex. And it's a 5 1 game. And put it on the ball. First home run of the spring by Alex Rios, a line drive shot, giving him six runs driven in. That's the eighth hit in two plus innings off of Barry Zito, who's getting hammered here today. And as you mentioned last inning, it could be a lot worse. He was very fortunate to be where he is, which is four, only four, four runs down. Curveball strike. Viciato, who struck out on a high fastball, check swing. Oh, and to the count. The Giants bullpen up and going. You figure Zito would have liked to have gone six today, but not with the shellacking he's taking. So that is out number one. And let's take a look at that inside the park home run by Pierzynski the other night. Ball is scalded in the center field. That was Chris Jones in center field. Had the ball carom to Justin Upton. And by the time he got it, not in time. 
Chris Young ran it. Center field. That's half slide, half fall by AJ. That's a long way around those bases. If you go straight lines, it's 120 yards. If you go the way you run them, it's probably closer to 150, 160. I think he took a look up at Joe McEwing and figured he was going to get a stop sign, but that ball <laughs> bounded away so far into right center field. And Joe said, just keep on going. Here's Gordon. He doubled and scored last inning. Checks it up. Two and two. That rolling curveball hammered and down into the corner. So Beckham, two for two with two doubles. Well, you can tell that Barry Zito is not near the pitcher he was with Oakland in the early days. 102 and 63 in the years he was with Oakland. Then he signed a huge contract. Still owed $50 million, came over, getting 140 starts with the Giants. And he's 18 games under 500 with an ERA a full point higher. That's coming into this year, and it would appear that that's going to be it for Zito. He's going to leave after getting shellacked. So as Bruce Bochy makes a change. We'll step out and be back after these messages. Scott Munter comes into the game. Barry Zito went two and a third innings, charged with five so far, on nine hits. Just the second spring appearance for Munter, who didn't figure to get in the game near this early if he got in at all. He's one of those pitchers that you bring along just in case a disaster happens to your starter, and that's what happened today. Escobar. Big swing, and the count nothing in one. Eduardo has singled. That got Beckham, who led off the inning last in the second, over to third, and he scored. Munner's 6'6, 240 pounds. Owen oh 2, Eduardo Escobar. Stocks on top five to one here in the bottom of the third.
Chopper to Hopper. And he was a spectator. Hill looked up and it looks like Munter hurt himself. Yeah. He tried to break off the mound quickly and I think he pulled up lame. That's one of the reasons why he couldn't get there. So they're going out and checking on him. And they're going to take him out of the game. So about as short a stint as you could possibly have for Scott Mutter. It was a 47th round draft choice in 2001 for these Giants, but a disappointing exit for him. So as they go to the bullpen once again, we'll be back after these messages. And join the White Sox for their home opener on Friday, April 13th against the Tigers at 1.10 p.m. All fans will receive a 2012 White Sox magnetic schedule presented by U.S. Cellular, the exclusive wireless provider of the White Sox. So purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Ramon Ortiz comes in the game and he'll have as much time as he wants to to loosen up. And there's a look at Ramon. This spring. Six games, a pretty decent spring so far. The Giants are going to have to use a few more pitchers than they intended when they came over here because of the early exit of Barry Zito and then the injury to Munter. So Ortiz finds himself in the game here in the protracted third. When he first came up, they were comparing him with Pedro Martinez. He had some terrific stuff. But a lot of things happen to slightly built. A lot of things happen to all pitchers, but slightly built pitchers. They have a tendency to break down maybe a little bit more frequently. That's why the clubs are going to 6'5, 6'6, 6'7 guys. Is, here's the Aza. But one thing about baseball. And that's one of the greatest things about the game. They come in all sizes and shapes. Diazza, 0 for 1 with a sacrifice and an RBI. That's foul back. Pedro Martinez, what a great pitcher, isn't he? He's in it. Upper echelon of for a six year period, he was just about as good as anybody. Well, what made him kind of special was when he came up with the Dodgers, Diamond Lasorda didn't think that he was big enough or durable enough to start, so they traded him for Delano de Shields. And it turned out he was both big enough and strong enough to become one of baseball's best. And Delano 
became a player. Not a great one, but a decent play. One and one to count, one out. Runners at the corners. There goes Escobar. There's a fake. And the steal. Now the Giants bring the infield in. Pedro pitched a lot of good games against us, but he pitched one special game in Fenway. And it was absolutely unbelievable. Albert Bell was with us. And Albert was having the greatest second half of any hitter I've ever seen as he gets him on a breaking ball. So a big strikeout, two down. And that'll bring up Lily Bridge. <laughs> That second half he had was almost unbelievable. He came to the plate. It was in the seventh or the eighth inning. Pedro had a, I think it was a one nothing lead at the time. There were a couple guys on. And Wimpy, Tom Petroik was doing the game with me. And you can just see Pedro. Is that nice stop right there by Stewart, who is a good catcher. Listen, Wimpy, watch this at bat. You can just Pedro getting into it. First pitch with 95 mile an hour fastball inside corner strike one. Next pitch was 95 mile an hour fastball inside corner strike two. Next pitch was a 96 mile an hour fastball inside corner. <laughs> Grab some bench, Albert. That was it. <laughs> Whatever he was looking for, he didn't get it. <laughs> Now, which I always had to respect with Pedro Martinez was his great straight change because it was the same release point, same arm velocity as an overpowering fastball. And he was just a tremendous competitor on the mound. And he could throw it through a teacup. He would hit a hundred sometimes when he had to. A little bitty, little bitty bit of a thing. Two out, two on, one and two the count. So Ortiz comes in, gets the job done. Sox do put a crooked number up on that board, and we will go to the fourth leading, 5-1.
Top of the fourth inning. 5 10 and 1 for our guys, 1 1 and 0 for their guys. 29 year old right hander Philip Umber on the bump. There's first pitch strike to Melky Cabrera. And a very long bottom of the third inning. So hopefully Phil Umber is loosened up and thrown strikes, and he is. Going to the count. Got in on him right there, and he fights it off. Very close on a backdoor breaking ball, but Barry Larson thought it was off the corner, and it most likely was. He gone. Fourth strikeout for Umber. And a reminder, get Chicago Sports News Nightly on Sportsnet Central, presented by AT&T U-verse. Coming up tonight at 6.30, we'll catch up with the Bulls, who had a thrilling victory against the Raptors last night. And talk to Sox outfielder Alex Rios to join Luke Stuckmeyer for our Sportsnet Central, presented by AT&T U-verse, tonight at 6.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Brett Pill. Reached on a throwing error by Escobar back in the first inning. We told you about it was a tale of two halves for Philip Umber. First part of the season in 16 starts. The record was receiving at 8 and 5, but the opponents hit just 218 against him. Nobody was doing anything. In the second half in 10 starts, ERA ballooned to 501, opponents hitting 287. He just hit the wall, ran out of gas. Be the first to tell you that that was a new experience for him going that long and that deep and that many innings into the season. He will be a better pitcher this year for that experience last year. Joaquin Arias. He was robbed of a base hit on a beautiful play by Lillibridge at third. That's in the right field. And if you miss that beautiful play by Lillard Bridge, we'll show it to you when we return next inning. Meanwhile, Sox lead it by four.
Coffee Pouches, the alternative to tobacco for professional baseball. Visit GetGrinds.com today for more information. And we told you about that beautiful play by Lillibridge to save at least one run. Here it is. That's a Jim Dandy. Bottom of the fourth inning. Adam Dunn, who has walked and struck out, will lead it off. Change up. Fades away. High into left field. Cabrera back at the edge of the track. One out. And a reminder White Sox baseball is brought to you by Grinds Coffee Pouches, the healthy alternative to tobacco for professional baseball. So visit Grinds.com for more information. Here's Canerco. Probably two for two. With an RBI and a run scored. These guys have hooked up a lot together. In Ortiz's days with the Angels. Good swing, just made a good pass at that, just underneath. Field playing Canerco straight up. And he's three for three. Just fists that one into right field. And a pinch runner. Like Dan Johnson from up here. Jim Gallagher instead of Dan. And here's Pierzynski. He has walked and did an opposite field two run homer. He just missed that one. High into short left. Cabrera now takes charge and makes the catch. Well, he called it a little late. And Crawford went out, looked like Crawford was going to make the play, but when he heard Melky finally say, I've got it, he peeled off. And Cabrera made a lunging catch. That'll bring up Alex, who's two for two, a single, a hard single, and a line drive home run, his first of the spring. Breaking ball misses. And there's another high pop up left side. And it'll retire the side. We'll go to the fifth leading by four.
And looking for a flexible ticket plan for the 2012 season? Well, the White Sox Pick 7 and Pick 14 plans let you select the games you want, including great matchups like the BP Crosstown Cup Series, and plans start at just 89 bucks. So call 312-674-1000 or visit whitesox.com to order yours today. And joining us in the booth right now is Executive Vice President and General Manager of our Chicago White Sox, Kenny Williams. And Kenny, welcome. Good to see you guys. It's been a while. How are things looking to you? You know, good, actually. There's a quiet confidence about uh, this club and, and a lot of positives that, uh, you know, we can just go down the list on. And, uh, you know, it, there's reason for optimism. So, you know, a lot of the things we came into camp looking to uh, see improved upon have been improved upon, and the attitude's been great. And uh, it's just uh, there are a lot of positives. You had some pretty good news today with Jesse Crane going 40 pitches and feeling pretty decent, but... Will he be ready? Well, <laughs> you know, I kid the relievers and I kid Coop and the guys. You know, how much do you have to throw to get, <laughs> you know, get in shape for one inning? <laughs> you know, go run a few laps. Go run a few laps. That should, that should get your wind up, right? <laughs> but evidently they need to get the pitch count up. So, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the things, Kenny, is the fact that you just mentioned the word attitude and, and – uh, when I first got here on the 1st of March, it took about a week. You could definitely see a big difference. And like Robin and I were talking, attitude can overcome a lot of things. Attitude, and there's, there's usually only two kinds of attitude, either good or bad. Yeah. Not too much in the middle. And attitude can overcome a lot of things. It can overcome talent. It can overcome a lack of talent. And if you don't believe that, just look at the Tampa Bay Rays last year. They thought they could yeah. win. Yeah, yeah. If you think you can, first you have to think you that's can. That's exactly right. You know, otherwise, otherwise, you, the one thing that's for certain is you're not going to. So, you know, we we start with that, and we start with uh, a lot of talent that, you know, can can, uh, you know, can can reinforce, you know, that thought. So we are, you know, we're at a stage where, uh, yes, we have to have some bounce back years from uh, some guys, but all indications are we're going to get exactly that. Uh, they have been nothing short of who we thought they were when we signed them. Uh, you see a, a little bit uh, uh, more confidence from the team as a whole as a result. And, you know, I've got a saying the first meeting that I had with the guys, I said, with the coaching staff, I said, hey, listen, you know, two things. Coach them up and and remain positive. I talked to you a little bit, Hawk, about uh, the San Francisco 49ers, whom I spent a lot of time with recently this past year. And... Uh, from the top of the organization on down, these guys just remain positive. Get that out of here. Well, he'll suck it up. He's pretty good. They, they 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 took the same group of guys basically, added a couple of pieces here and there. It changed and, changed the coach and and pretty much said, okay, now we got to go win. And they were as positive and as united as they possibly could be, and uh, and you started to see the results on the field. So we just have to get that momentum and uh, you know get off to a, a good start. If we don't, I don't think there'll be any panic because this is the grind. This is a, there's a grinded out kind of attitude coming from that dugout. You know, we've seen some horrific injuries over the last week, and spring training is long. It always is, and guys are ready to go probably about now, but you guys have been fortunate. You've had a very healthy camp. <laughs> Where's the wood? Double knock on, the... Definitely knock on the wood, but, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty good. Yeah, I, you know, and that's the thing. A lot of people don't understand it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I'll get home and I'll be asked, well, what was the score of the game today? And, you know, did you win? And all that. I can generally come close to the score, <laughs> you know. But I, what I can tell you is if anybody got hurt. <laughs> you know, is there anything that we need to be worried about on the injury front? That's what I can tell you on a given day down here in spring. That was a quick one. You want to say another half? I'll do whatever you like. All right. We'll be back. Halfway home, leading 5-1. to one.
Sox lead at 5-1 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ramon Ortiz on the bump for the Giants. And Kenny, we got a young man that's going to lead off this inning as we talked with Robin. and we, Steve and I talked about earlier in the game. Who's got a track record? His name is Diane Vicieto, and he's got a track record of being a slow starter. He did it <laughs> at Birmingham his first year with us. He did it the next two years at Charlotte, and he finished up gangbusters. You know, and generally, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, he slide, he's sliding out in his uh, in his approach to the ball, trying to get to it before, you know, before he the ball gets to him. So uh, it's more of a arm and shoulder swing than uh, him using his hands. And, you know, they, they, they work on it every day. And occasionally you'll you'll see him and uh, do it. And when he does it, it's it's the same guy that we know can just hit the ball all over the field with authority. Uh, but when he gets into that sliding mode and he's he's leaking out to his front side, you're just going to get a longer, slower swing. But uh, you know you got to keep getting getting the guy reps and getting him to use his hands. And when he does, he can be a special guy. Well, he's a monster in my opinion. And I was talking, Steve, uh, in our last telecast about the the drill that I saw Manta working with Alex Rios on. That was one of the best drills I've ever seen. And I asked if it was over. I told Alex, I said, Alex, since you've been in a White Sox uniform, that's the best you've seen on the bat. Yeah. It's when he takes the five balls and throws them real quick, and they and he got to get set naturally rather than trying to you know fake it a little bit. So there are a lot of good things. I'm with you. I'm optimistic about this thing. There are a lot of good upsides to the upcoming season. And you've got a, a brand new coaching staff, and I know the guys are working very hard. You saw them the other day; they were really dragging. They went to Tucson. <laughs> you saw that extravaganza yeah. down there. <laughs> Came here for a night game, and these guys put in long, hard hours every day, whether they play one or two games, but. How natural has the transition been between blending the coaches who are retained and the new guys who have come in? Well, I will say this, that uh, I had uh, great expectations from these guys because I just knew that they would fit together uh, well, but they've exceeded those expectations. And they've come up with some things, like Hawk just mentioned, some drills, uh, some, some fundamental uh, exercises and challenge has, have challenged our guys to be smarter. Uh, on the field with regards to you know any number of things whether it be holding runners uh, the bunt plays and uh, You know having a variety of bunt plays and, and really working on it and uh, Outfield positioning and and you know Harold's been, been consulted uh, and in the mix a little bit uh, uh, More on the hitting side of things and approach side of things and it's just a uh, You know it's a very cohesive group and I think the players uh, Like it and they, they fed off of it I love the fact that you've got Mark Parent to sit next to Robin. I think that Robin is going to be a terrific manager, and I think Mark Parent is really going to help him. I mean, you got a catcher, you got a guy who managed in the minor leagues, and you got a really good guy who doesn't mind getting in a player's face maybe and mentioning to him that he might want to do something differently. Yeah, we're going to we're going to have to take advantage of uh, of Mark and Joe McEwing uh, as as quickly as we can and because I don't know that how long we're going to be able to keep them. I think they're major league managers in the making, and uh, they are they are definitely assets on this club. We recently brought back uh, Jeff Torborg and Joe Nasik as well uh, to have them around. Art Kushner as well uh, to uh, try to accelerate the 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 little intangible things, much like. When I took this position, I brought in Roland Heeman and, and asked Roland, Roland, please see the things for me that I don't see yet because I haven't sat in the chair. And it's a similar approach with, with these guys. You should have you should have just been involved. It's a great baseball discussion, you know, with all these guys in the same room and uh, historical references and, you know, into how to get players who, who needed to have bounce back years and all the other things that, you know, happen on the baseball field and help. Heck, not just from the first inning to the ninth inning, but the ninth inning to the first inning. That's the key. A lot of times it is. That's the biggest thing, in my opinion, in baseball. Doing it from last pitch to the first pitch of the next game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The game itself will take care of itself. That's but, that's the one thing I think, uh, you know, Robin and the coaching staff has really shown me their ability to communicate and get guys uh, rallied around you know one common cause and you know, that's winning that's, that's preparing yourself to win as many games as you can possibly win and uh, you know I think I think it's going to be a grind let's face it you got you know some good competition in the American League Central Detroit on paper uh, is is a solid club but we've, we've
we've been on paper. We've been the chosen, <laughs> the chosen one on paper a few times too, and didn't bring it home. So let's hope that's the case this year. Kenny, thanks for the time. Kenny Williams, Enjoy our it. executive vice president, general manager, Sox lead at five to one. Eli Whiteside will lead it off for the Giants here in the top of the sixth inning. Sox lead it five to one. Whiteside is 0 for one. He's grounded to second. Philip Umber gave up an unearned run in the first. He's only given up a one hit. That was a leadoff single to Crawford, leading off the second. He has retired the last 11 in a row. And he's most likely going to fulfill exactly what Don Cooper wanted him to do, which was. Six innings or 80 pitches in the neighborhood of 80 pitches. Three and one to count to Whiteside. Eli, 32 year old veteran. Came in hitting at 240 on the spring. And he walks the leadoff man. So here's Blanco. Gregor Blanco has gone out to second, hit the first pitch of the ball game to Beckham, and then in the third went out to left field. Now AJ has got to go and settle Philip down somewhat. He walked a guy that doesn't hit very well in Whiteside and threw ball one to Blanco, a guy who's having a terrific spring. There's a strike on the inside corner. Count evens at one to Baco. Outfield, a little short. Swung around to the left. Gap in right center. And that's to the backstop. His second wild pitch of the day for Umber. I think he tried to throw a change up, just went way inside and flattened out under AJ's glove. That's popped up in the center field. Gonna be no advance. 
uh, Whiteside, and that's out number one. And checking a couple of the scores for you. Can he mention the Tigers? Tigers having a big spring. They're 14 and 4 coming into the day. And they had a 1 1 10 inning tie with the Yankees. The Yankees 13 and 9 on the spring. Toronto beat Boston 6 to 5. Another 10 inning tie, Baltimore, Philadelphia. That game tied at 3. Tigers had a split squad as they beat Philadelphia in the other game 6 to 3. So here's Shireholtz. Takes up high ball one. Beckham sucks it up. Two down. It's like the Sox starting rotation is pretty much starting to come together. The last few times out for each and every one of the starters has been a good one. Peavy's had a couple of good outings in a row. Last time we saw Gavin Floyd, although he walked five men, he went six innings, gave up a couple of runs. John Denks's last outing was very good. Chris Sale's last outing was just outstanding. And so the starters look just about ready to go as we move late into the spring. Cabrera almost walked into it. Nucky has walked, scored. That was an owner and run in the first, and he struck out, leading off the fourth. That ball hit well into right center field, but Diaz's got to beat the ball, and that'll be tired of the side. Nothing across. We we'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Five one good guy. And a reminder tomorrow, Carlos Boozer and our Bulls suit up for a showdown with Denver as Wilson Chandler and the Nuggets pay a visit to the United Center. Coverage begins at 6.30 with McDonald's Bulls pregame live. Bulls Nuggets tomorrow night at 6.30, only on Comcast Sports. Matt Yorkin comes into the game after a fine job by Ramon Ortiz. He went two and two-thirds, gave up a hit, and struck out three. There you look at Yorkin so far. A very successful spring. Diazza, 0 for 2 with a sacrifice RBI. And a fine running catch in center field. Yeah. Oh, had to go get him. It's going to be a big advantage for us, I believe, during the course of this year. And there's a base hit. Well, let's just let's just look at 
2011. You and I both have been in this game a long time. A long time, yes. That's about as bad outfield defense as we've ever seen. And certainly it wears down a pitching staff, and eventually you got to score way too many more runs than you need to score. But I think with Rio shifting back to his natural position, and Diazza playing center field where he can really go get him, it's just a question of Viciato getting used to left field, and I think it's going to be a whole lot better out there. Little bridge. All over it, just underneath it. And it's out number one. Well, you being a pitcher, you know as well as anybody, better than most. When you got guys going from first to third who shouldn't be going from first to third, especially with one out, that will grind them. Well, it's, it sets up a completely different inning most of the time because now you got a man at third base, especially with less than two outs. Where a fly ball wouldn't hurt you at all if he hadn't gone to third. But in fact, he's standing there, it costs you a run. And that happened a lot. Quite obviously, look, Juan Pierre had a nice year for us, but he just couldn't throw at all and he couldn't hold base runners from taking that extra base. Ball hit hard. And rack him up. So that will retire the side. We'll go to the seventh, still leading 5-1. Top of the seventh inning. Philip Umber still on the bump. He has been outstanding today. Well, giving up just one hit, he's kept his pitches to a minimum. And he's held the Giants B team right there. And a lot of regulars not in attendance today, but you still are facing major league hitters and you still got to throw strikes. Well, as a rule, this is the, usually the kind of lineups that beat you. It's true because they're going to be getting three and four at bats and the other guy's going to be getting one or two at bats. What I hated was those Sunday lineups after a Saturday night game because they put all the little lefties in the lineup <laughs> against me. Jordan Danks who came into pinch run takes over in center field. Hit hard but. We got a man there. We got Tyler Saladino there. One out. Arias takes a curveball strike. Arias was robbed of a base hit on a beautiful play by Lillibridge. Back in the first and also saved at least one run.
This is the second of five games coming your way from spring training right here over Comcast Sportsnet. The next one will be next Thursday. Little soft comebacker. That's the kind that Umber likes. First inning, Phillips struggled a bit and then all of a sudden got very consistent. As far as pitches are concerned, here he is sailing along in the seventh inning, just about ready to touch the 90 mark. It's been a nice, relaxed effort after the first inning. On the fist. Carford has the only giant hit. That was a sharp single to center leading off the second. He gone. Yo hook. Seventh inning stretch, 5 1 White Sox. Right now, let's take a look at our Illinois lottery. Anything's possible. First inning. Beautiful play by Lillibridge. Saved at least one and maybe more. As our Sox lead it five to one. Jim Gallagher. Making his first plate appearance. Came in for Canerco. Polly was three for three today with an RBI and a run scored. Joe Panic. And at second base, it's Carter Jerica. Or Jerica. Nine thousand three hundred nineteen in attendance. There's a strike and the count three and one. Two hopper one out. And 
and season tickets for the 2012 season are available right now. Purchase a full season plan or choose from two great split season plans and gain access to the best seats at the best price with the most benefits. Plans start just below $400 and can be purchased by visiting whitesocks.com or calling 312-674-1000. Here's A.J. He has walked, hit a two-run homer. Then he popped up to left field. And that two-run homer coming back in the third inning was an opposite field shot. A.J. now four home runs this spring. One hands that one. And that's out number two. He just did it again. Giants with an unearned run in the first. We tied it with one in the first. Took the lead with one in the second. Added three in the third. Five, 12, and one for us. One, one, and oh for them. Here's Rios. Two for three, a single, and that line drive home run. Back to back with AJ. Oh, oh and to the count. Pops him up right side. All right, all right, all right. And that'll retire the side. So a good inning for Yorkin. And we'll go to the eighth. This one's for. So you'll feel Saturday, April 14th against the Tigers from Detroit at 3.10 p.m. First 20,000 fans will receive a White Sox knit bomber hat. So purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Got a new pitcher. It's Matt Fulton, 35-year-old left-hander who's had a perfect spring so far. No ERA. Just two hits in four and a third innings. Nary a walk. Is Matt... In competition for the closer spot, has done just about everything right this spring. Man, what a job by Humber. What an outstanding effort by Philip Humber after starting a little shaky in that first inning, not due to anything that he did himself. He settled down, went seven innings, longest stint of the spring, I believe, by any of the Sox starters. Just for brilliant baseball, not only got his work in, but left with a four-run lead. Two 
Jimenez moves in behind the plate for AJ. AJ had a good day. Two run homer opposite field off the southpaw Barry Zito. 5 1. That guy's on top of that's a bullet. Harum's over. Now the gun. No, can't get him. Gillespie got down that line in a hurry because that one carried right to Escobar, who came up throwing and wasn't all that close. Sniff a base hit all the way and turned it into one. And here's Chris Stewart. And there's a base hit. Just fisted out there in the center field. So. First two men aboard. That'll bring up the DH Eli Whiteside, who has grounded to second and walked. And Eli being a catcher would be an ideal candidate for two. Take strike one. New right fielder in the game. It's Brady Schumacher. And it's a little soft looper. One out. Looks like Robin is going to go to the bullpen. So they're having a conference at the mound and. Addison Reed looks like he's coming in the game. All right. Matt Thornton departs. Addison Reed comes on and we'll be back. And you can follow the White Sox with MLB.com at Bad 12 for your iPhone, iPad, or Android. Get spring training scores, stats, highlights, live audio, and more. That's text at Bat to 31826 or visit WhiteSox.com for the team. Edison Reed comes in the game, and you wonder why Robin Ventura in a game that is seemingly well in hand would take out Thorne, who's had a perfect spring, and bring in Reed. Because he wants to see what he does under a game on the line condition. If we get Addison, one of those guys that's vying for a spot not only in the bullpen, but a spot as a closer. 
So you bring him in with a couple of men on. There's only one out here. It's the top of the eighth inning. And see what the young man can do. And that's what he told Thornton. He said, Matt, I know what you can do. We've got to see what this young man out there can do. Two on one out, five one socks on top. Perez, the center fielder. Get hacked by Perez underneath it. Meanwhile, he's in the hole, nothing in two. Breaking ball, that was a hanger and got away with it. And we mentioned our next game will be coming your way Thursday, right over Comcast Sportsnet. It's a 305 start against the Dodgers. And our final game from Arizona will be Sunday, April 1st, against Cincinnati. And it also will be a 305 start. And then we'll have Tuesday against Houston. Try to nail an outside corner. Tuesday, April 3rd against the Astros for Minute Maid. We'll play there also on the 4th, off day on the 5th, and tee it up against the Wranglers from Texas on the 6th. The bell rings. It does indeed, and it can't get here soon enough. Well, you just ask the players. <laughs> They'll tell you. Well, as we've discussed before, Steve, you and I both know it's a fan spring training. And that's the way it should be. He gone. Huh. And a good one. We talked about closer candidates at the beginning. Matt Thornton. Now in five games in the spring, that's updated to today with Addison Reed. Hector Santiago and Nate Jones with Santiago and Jones as surprising candidates. So it's going to be one call left to make by Robin and his staff as to who at least starts the year as a closer. So here's Dominguez. And there's a breaking ball. It's back through the middle in the center field. Hit softly, but it got by Beckham. That's the 5 2 ball game. That was a pretty good pitch, low and away. Dominguez gets it off the end of the bat, just barely able to elude Gordon Beckham at second base. But it cuts the gap to three. And that'll bring up Christian hitting for Cabrera. Milky has walked and scored. That was in the first inning, unearned run. He was 0 for 2 today. First pitch strike. In our last game, we had Hal Gibson, home plate umpire behind the plate, did a heck of a job. This guy today is doing a Same heck of a thing. job. Yes, sir. He has very much so. Very large. Almost walked into it. Count evens at one. And of course, the bell rings for us at home on the 13th. Got Tigers in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for three, followed by the Orioles for four. And our first home stand. Pretty good curveball right there. And 
pass into center field. Jordan Banks. Maybe the best outfielder in our organization makes the catch. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth, leading 5-2. Reminder that weekday morning, start your day off with the Dan Patrick Show on Comcast Sportsnet. Tune in as Dan talks sports with your favorite athletes, celebrities, and sports media personalities. So get your sports day started with the Dan Patrick Show weekday mornings from 8 to 11 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. A new giant pitcher coming in, and it's Steve Edlifson. Last year, mostly at Fresno with a short stint in San Francisco. That's what he's done this spring. Trying to earn a spot in the bullpen with the Giants last year. Not horribly impressive. ERA of 9.53 in 13 games, but didn't get that much of an opportunity. ERA over five and a half at Triple A. Diane Viciato will lead it off. He is 0 for 3 today. Couple of strikeouts and a grounder to third. Ball hit hard. Nice catch. That's what happens when you're struggling. You hit it right on the money. Somebody be either makes a good play on you or you hit it right to him. Yeah, you can hardly hit the ball too much harder than that. So here's Gordon. He's had a good day. A couple of doubles, a run scored, two for three. Sully's happy. Takes first pitch strike. Sully, of course. Gordon's mom. Looking on, I'm sure, with Grace and Gwen. One and one to count. Ball hit hard. Meanwhile, two down. Hector Santiago, who's made certainly a wonderful impression, not only coming up last year, but this spring. He's another candidate, not only for nailing down a job, but nailing down the closer job. 
Here's Escobar. Two for three. Also picked up a stolen base. Now make it three for four. So he came in hitting it 448. Four eighty five. Not bad. And here's Jordan. Banks takes that one down low. Diazza was one for three with an RBI. It's been three hitters against Edlifson, and all of them have hit the ball hard. Saladino on deck if Danks can reach. Takes that one down low. Nine thousand three hundred nineteen. And that's fisted into left field for base hit. Here's Saladino. First pitch strike to Tyler. Ball gets away. It'll be a wild pitch. Both runners advance. And also a reminder you can join the White Sox on Facebook and put Twitter for the latest breaking news, exclusive videos, and photos, contest, and special ticket offers. So like the official White Sox page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter via at White Sox or visit whitesox.com slash connect today. Another breaking ball. Tyler, 22 years old, out of San Diego. And there's a shot caught. Nice catch right there. By the first baseman, we'll go to the ninth with a 5-2 lead.
Got a new pitcher. And there he is. <laughs> Hector Santiago. And so you're seeing basically the, the closer derby all in the same day. Santiago comes in at 1 0, the ERA, 129. Having a very good spring. Jimenez goes out to have a word with him. So Thornton, Reed, and now Santiago trying to nail it down. Three run lead, three outs to get. Jose Martinez checks in in left field. Ray Almeido defensively at second base. And Brett Pill, the first baseman, takes ball one. Pill 0 for 3 today. And the count 2 and 0. Got in on him. Sox with a run in the first, one in the second, three in the third. Giants an unearned run in the first, added one in the eighth. We have 14 hits, they have four. High in the center field, can of corn for Jordan. One out. First inning of this game took about 35 minutes combined between struggles of Philip Umber and Barry Zito. The struggles for Zito continued as he went two and a third innings, gave up nine hits and five runs. But Umber settled down and threw a brilliant seven. Joe Panic, the shortstop. Count evens at one to Panic. Jacks it up. Two and two. There's a swing and a miss, and he's going to reach. Threw it where he wanted to, got him to expand that strike zone. Jimenez couldn't control it. The strikeout winds up at first base. One out, top of the ninth. Fastball a little high and wide. Two home runs in the game if you're just tuning in back to back in the third inning. Two run opposite field homer by AJ. And Rios, a line shot over that left field wall.
Way outside. Come on, Hector. No, no walks. No walks. And there's ball four. So without a hit, they have succeeded in bringing the tying run to the plate. Now they're going to pinch hit for Gillespie. And we'll see who's coming out of that dugout. Hector Sanchez. Well, Gillespie had three pretty good at bats. Hit the ball hard when, as far as hitting the ball hard. Put a hard one into a double play, a line shot in the center, and then a line shot off the glove of the third baseman, Saladino. On the count to Sanchez. That was a good screwball, and he kept it out away from Sanchez, who just barely was able to tip it off the end of the bat. Tough pitch to hit, especially in that location. Down ball goes to second and rack him up. This ball game is over. So the Sox get a terrific, terrific outing from Philip Umbro. I thought he was absolutely brilliant today, and then the bullpen was just good enough to nail it down. Sox come away with a Sunday win as we wind our way through spring training, and we'll see you on Thursday. Yes. And then a reminder, Chicago White Sox on Comcast Sports in Chicago has been produced by Michelle Godwin, directed by Don Jimmy, Jim Angio. Our associate producer is Dave Ross. Our remote technical manager is Mark Harper. The senior executive producer is Jim Cornell Jr. And our next telecast will be this Thursday, March 29th, when the Dodgers take on our Sox right here from Camelback Ranch. Game time is 3 o'clock. So for my partner, Steve Stone, this is a Hawk. So long, everybody, from Glendale.